bus. He was coaching against the Pittsburgh Steelers. And see, this is why when people tell me championships mean everything, when you running up against a team like the Pittsburgh Steelers with all those high, uh, Hall of Famers on offense and defense, and you don't have a team full of Hall of Famers, somehow, some way, and they're well coached and you're a good coach, they you just don't win. It's just, just that's just the way the thing works. Bum Phillips is the is the number six coach on my list. Big ups to rest in peace and big ups to Bum. The next coach on this list is an, he's active, so he got an opportunity to move off this list. He's number five. He has co he coached the five straight NFC Championship games. Uh. And the ref cheated them too. Yeah, that you talk about that catch in the corner, Chief. Yeah, yeah, 1979 or 78. It was a catch in Houston in the corner. No, it was in Pittsburgh in the corner. It was a catch. They said uh, Dan Pastorini can't think. They think uh, number double zero. I think it was name. I can't think his name. Double zero would have caught it in the corner for a touchdown to beat the Houston Oilers. Wasn't no instant replay back then. And then they lost to the Steelers, who subsequently beat the Rams in the Super Bowl. But uh, shout out to Chief Rock for throwing that in there. See, that's that's why we built for this. Because uh, I think Joe, Joe from uh, uh, Joe from uh, uh, Saskatchewan, Canada, uh, he used to play executive producer. But this this week, Chief Rocker got my back. Uh, uh, I ain't gonna tell y'all what Joe really is. He might be at work. Let's we don't want to get him fired. But uh, uh, number five, five straight NFC Championship games. Uh, again, it comes down to you might be an excellent coach. He had one of the great, better defensive coach, rest in peace, Jimmy Johnson. And argue and the toughest division, uh, 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 and, and all of football, if you ask me, the NFC West number two is the AFC North. Uh, with the with the Cowboys, the Giants, the Eagles, and at the time it was uh the Cardinals. Why was they in that division? Only Jesus knows why the damn St. Louis. No, it was St. Louis at that time and the Arizona Cardinals was in the damn NFC East. And in St. Louis ain't east of shit. I don't know, east of California. But, uh, uh and, 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 and the Washington racial slurs. Um, yeah, you're right, Chief Rocker. Andy Reid is one of the better coaches. He's showing this in Kansas City and he, uh, uh, he is number five on my list. Big ups to Andy Reid. Hopefully he can come off the field. I do remember them making a, wide, a, a song about that wide receiver, but it was a country song, so I never heard it, Chief. I'm not going to ever listen to no country music. Not like that, man. I do like, I, I ain't, I ain't going to lie. I mean, I like that Devil Went Down to Georgia song. I'm, I'm frank. But uh, next up, man, even though I think this dude is, he is Chicago dude, so you know I had to put the Chicago on Y'all know Chicago fights in the building. But uh, this dude right here, four straight Super Bowls, had one of the most talented teams in football. And again, winning a championship is excellent, but it does not determine your ability at anything. Don't tell me, Patrick, you ain't one of the greatest centers of all time. You can tell me the car Malone ain't, but I'll let y'all have him. Uh, uh, don't tell me uh, uh, Warren Moon ain't one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. Dan Fouts. Uh, even my man, Mc Five, McNabb. Don't tell me these guys were not excellent ball players just because you didn't win. Larry Nance. I mean, we can go through the list of these great ball players that never won a championship. So I'm not gonna hang my hat on you didn't win a championship, so you're not great. Mark Levy is the coach that I'm talking about, and he is from Chicago. So of course, y'all know I had to have either left hand or Chicago dude on. My At least the last three, and then I'm gonna get uh, I'm gonna get back to them in a minute. This is a very important. This is this is a somewhat emotional thing. Uh, uh, I, I'm gonna talk about now. Protests and athletics, and why are our young people being exposed to these fucking pedophiles? Man, we're gonna talk about the pedophiles first. Uh, our young sister Simone Biles. First, I'm a big hug. Big ups to Simone Biles. And this is what another instance in which I say the racism is showing its ugly face in America. See, we always want to big up people, but we don't want to get them and just do. Simone Biles, at age 22, is the most decorated Olympic gymnast in the history of this country. Why isn't she speak being spoken about like? 
uh, uh, as one of the all time greats. We just keep hearing about her doing great things. Now, why, you know, part of your greatness is, in my opinion, is some of the things that you've overcome. We know about this pervert, Larry Nassim, who molested over 300 young ladies while training for the Olympics. He's doing, I hope he don't ever get out of jail. I don't know how long they gave him. They should have just gave him, like Bernie Mac said, they should have just gave him ever and take the foe off that motherfucker. But she dealt with that. She's dealing with it. She says it's extremely difficult for her to even participate in, in, in gymnastics. But even throughout all that pain, this young lady, Simone Biles, is becoming, has become, in my personal opinion, even though I'm totally ignorant to this situation, but when you are the most decorated anybody in any sport, they didn't have no problem giving the boy, uh, the weed smoking boy, what's his name, uh, Chief Rocket, what's the, what's the weed smoking center, uh, 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 swimmer name? They had no problem calling him the most, the, the best swimmer ever, but they got a problem calling Simone that. They go to Simone Bow. And this leads me to another pervert in the Olympic uh, world, man. It is this man by the name of Craig, uh, Mutasi. No, 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 excuse me. Richard Callahan. Craig Mutasi is one of the dudes he molested. Uh, Craig Mutasi and Adam Schmidt have made claims. Craig Mutasi made claims 10, 12 years ago, and Adam Schmidt has recently come on ESPN and said that this man, Richard Callahan, has molested them in the figure skating world. At what point do we stop protecting the lesser things in America, man. See, while we arguing about race, culture, religion, sexual preference, you got young people being molested and then nobody doing nothing about it. Why is it that when these monsters like Nasir and uh, 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 Callahan are putting their fucking hands on these young people and taking advantage of these young people who have been instructed to listen to them and you told and you told that your life is in their hands and your future and your dreams are in their hands so you put a whole lot of faith in them. Why are we not protecting these young people? See, we always chasing down these athletes for marijuana, speeding, and and, and piddly bullshit like that. Selling pants like the young boy prior from Ohio State. He sold a pair of pants that they gave him, and he got suspended in the National Football League for selling pants for a tattoo. But meanwhile, monsters like Dr. Nasir and this coach, uh, Richard Callahan, alleged, the young man said, listen to this, y'all. The young man alleged that Callahan used to get in front of him, strip down from the waist down, and touch on him. Now, a, a lot of people go, man, what, what do you let them do that for? I don't know. I can't explain it. You're not going to touch me, Necky. No, I don't, I don't even talk to Necky, dude. Like at the gym, man. Hey, what's up? Hey, man, when you put your pants on, talk to me. Then. But these people are not H-Rap, and they're not some of my listeners are saying, hey, why would you let them do that? They, they, they felt vulnerable. They allowed these men to molest them, which is a horrible situation. But I just want to know. How the hell that you get two claims of molestation of a child? And see, this is why I say that the news media in America always painting the news. And well, I mean, coloring the news. Because when it's Dr. Nasir and this dude Richard Callahan who allegedly did the horrible acts that he did, they call them underage youth. But a young, uh, 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 a young, uh, underage person. That's what they call them. Underage people. That's another way of saying child molester, y'all. So we gotta start saying these words like accused child molester. See, because when you hear the word, two words, child molester together, it curls your skin, hopefully. It makes you, it, it, it ramps up a little rage. I hope it does. Because when you do that, 
and then it'll make people in fear of the consequences. Underage person, you could be talking about an 18 year old with a 50 year old, he's too young. But no, nah, no, nah, these are young women between young women and young men that are in their low teens and early pubic, pubescent stages. And these animals are attacking these people and nothing is being done. How do you molest 300 young girls? And how do you molest, as far as we know, allegedly, two young men? Because there's only two people that uh, uh, that we know about. So we got to get on. We're going to stay on top of it. I'm going to stay on top of this story, just like I do with the Robert Kraft story. So I'm going to stay on top of that. And last but not least, on the big stories of the week, I want to give it up to uh, these two athletes. In the Pan Am, Pan Am game, which is, uh, the, uh, uh, he was a fencer. I, I, I couldn't get their names because, of course, they don't want to say their names on TV. It was a fencer and a hammer thrower in the Pan American games. And you probably, you don't even get to see them on TV. But these two young gentlemen, two white brothers, kneeled, uh, and, and violated the rules of the Pan Am game. Why is it against the rules to uh, make a political statement when the whole world is allegedly watching this beyond me? That's when you have the uh, a platform to do it. But these two young white men kneeled while receiving their medals. Now, they're going to probably receive some type of uh, uh, repercussions, and they're going to probably get in trouble for that. But I want to send a big shout out to them because anytime you stand enough, for, uh, like, like the great Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, Standing up for injustice anywhere is standing up for injustice everywhere. And when you don't stand up for injustice anywhere, you've not stood up for it everywhere. So I got to give it up to those young brothers for using their platform to be seen. And then after the uh, situation, they spoke out about uh, uh, the, uh, racial injustice and they spoke out about police brutality. So you got to give it up. <laughs> Killer Mike would say you are ally. So I'm gonna use Killer Mike, uh, MC from Atlanta, Georgia. Killer Mike, as Killer Mike would say, you brothers are allies, man. Big ups to y'all for standing up for the community, for standing up for wrong, standing up in the face of wrong, wrongdoing at all times. Now, with that being said, it's only one more segment to go on this show, and y'all, I mean, and y'all know what it is, and y'all know how I start. Come on, come on, we will win. Cause we will hit all game. We are motivated. We are dedicated. Come on now. Come on now. We will win. Cause we are the best on the field. Then we hit the field like all day life. All night life. On the blue life. On fence life. This best life. This squad life. House call life. In the sound life. In the sound life. In the sound life. That is the beginning of my football segment, which is going to be the longest segment of the day. And before I end up my list, I want to talk to y'all about a few things. First and foremost, uh, Antonio Brown. Everybody know the big story of the week has been Antonio Brown. Now, everybody likes to jump down your throat when you stand up and you're alone. See, being a renegade or a revolutionary or a person who goes against the grain, it, it, it gets you black ball or white ball or Singled out. And Antonio Brown made a stink about wearing a specific helmet. Now, ESPN framed it that he was being a diva, as they like the word they used to do. Diva wide receiver. And he was the he was the public enemy number one. Right up until Tom Brady said the same thing. Right up until Tom uh, uh Tom uh, uh, uh Aaron Rodgers said the exact same thing. Right up, right up until uh, Jason Witten said the exact same thing. See, the thing is, man, we have to stop expecting the Antonio Browns and the T.O.s to be orators. They are not great communicators when it comes to get, getting their message across. Sometimes they get a bit emotional and they get overzealous and they end up making themselves look relatively foolish. I'm not going to deny that. But all of a sudden, this is why I do my show. This is why me and my guys started this network. And this is why 
I talk the talk that I talk. So I can get the real story out there. At the end of the day, 